Welcome everybody. You can all hear me. Um, so we are starting the August meeting. Uh, we have everybody present with the exception of uh, Councillor Oosterhoff, from whom we have um, noticed that he wouldn't be with us. Uh, you have an agenda. Do I have any additions to the agenda? And seeing none, I look for a, a mover of the agenda as printed. William and the seconder, Councillor Doherty. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none then, those in favour of the agenda can wave or do something uh, and that uh, we have a printed agenda then. Uh, the confirmation of the minutes of July the 15th. I have not heard of any um, corrections to this yet. Are there any problems with it at all? Done. Need to unmute yourself. Oh, there you go. Uh, yes, I did send Derek uh, uh, a minor uh, correction. I, I believe he has it. Uh, uh, Derek, do you want to uh, read it or shall I? If you could go ahead, Don. I unfortunately don't have it up in front of me at the moment. Yes, well, um, it's at the bottom of page seven where I um, am saying something like the rear glass addition uh, would be unacceptable and uh, Instead of the words that are there, I think the more accurate words would be that the uh, I said that the proposed rear glass addition would be unacceptable according to the guidelines of any of Kingston's three heritage conservation districts. Thank you. So the rear glass addition would be unacceptable according to any to the oh. guidelines of any of Kingston's three. According to the guidelines, okay, yeah. yeah. Of any of the three. The minutes as they stand suggest that this property is in a uh, conservation district. Which yes, is which is not. So that line then, it's the last, just before the moving and seconding, Mr. Taylor stated that the proposed rear glass addition would be unacceptable according to the guidelines of any of the three district, heritage district guidelines. Okay. And I'll confirm that with you, Derek, later that we've both got the same thing. Any other suggestions, changes, errors? If not, I look for a mover of the amended minutes, the corrected minutes. Uh, Councillor Doherty and seconded by Don Taylor. Further discussion? Seeing none, those in favour, those opposed, we have enough hands there, so you have a set of minutes. Pecuniary interest, any known at present on today's properties? And if not, my usual reminder that if anything does come up, please speak up as, uh, as soon as you realise uh, uh, where discussion is going. Presentations, I believe we do not have any. Delegations? There are none. Briefings? There are none. Business? Um, cultural heritage, policy development, heritage assets is none, which brings us down to the first application, 128 136 Ontario Street. And who's looking after that? That would be Mr. Leary. Mr. Leary. Good morning, Mr. Leary. Good morning, everyone. Part four. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a, a part four uh, application. It's at uh, 128, 136 Ontario Street, uh, and it includes the row of uh, limestone commercial buildings. Can we go to the next slide, please? The property is on the corner of William and Ontario Streets. And if we can skip to the next one and see a picture of the buildings. So this is the aerial view of Ontario and William Street. Next slide, please. It's on the southwest corner. Um, so the property is adjacent to, um, but outside of the boundaries of Old Sydenham's Heritage Conservation District. So this is a part four application. Uh, the 
the applications or the property that we're looking at is the uh, Hardy's buildings. It's two buildings actually. Uh, the Hard Hardy's buildings is 128 to 134, which is the three story building on the left. Uh, it was built in 1841 and connected to it is a two and a half story uh, building known as Nicholson's Meat Market at 136 and it was built around 1842, so slightly after. So if we can skip the next slide, please. We'll look at the cultural heritage value of this uh, property. And this is the rear looking down William Street. So next slide, please. So this property was designated under part four in 1975. It was amended in 1976. Uh, I have specifically included only the attributes for Hardy's buildings as they are primarily the subject of today's application. Uh, the Nicholson Meat Market building uh, is proposed to have a new roof, uh, but the alterations that we're looking at today are primarily on uh, the Hardy's buildings, which is that three-story building um, from 128 to 134. Uh, the attributes include the uh, row itself with its gabled roof, uh, corbels, chimneys, parapets, uh, the 11 bay fenestration pattern, the uh, irregular pattern, fenestration pattern on the ground floor, including the two two arch carriageway openings um, and the eight bay rear um, fenestration pattern, which is noted as an attribute. So we'll keep that in mind. Next slide, please, as we go through the uh, application. So this is the front of the building as you've seen from Ontario Street. Uh, a heritage permit was approved by council for a very similar application in 2013. Uh, that approval uh, lapses after three years. So 2016, it lapsed. Uh, the applicant is now wishing to reactivate that previous approval um, and get approval for, for a very similar um, project. What are we are looking at today? So looking at the front view, uh, Ontario Street side, uh, the only alterations on this elevation are those four shed dormers you can see on the roof. Um, they are to include a number of windows uh, clad in dark gray cedar uh, siding and a standing seam uh, metal roof. The uh, central carriageway opening, as you can see on the ground floor, uh, it's currently a, a garage type door. Uh, it's to be converted to a person door, uh, what we call a tripartite person door. Uh, with an arch transom similar to the door arrangement on the south end of the building. So we can go to the next slide, please. The majority of today's application uh, relates to the rear of the building. So I'll go through these quickly. Uh, the, the main um, change, I would argue is the main change, is the three-story uh, addition to the rear. It has a gable roof, it's approximately 400 square feet or 37 square meters. Uh, it's to include a new entrance, uh, elevator, and stairwell. The rear addition also includes two blind dormers, uh, and it's to be clad in a gray horizontal wood siding uh, with a dark metal standing seam profile roof. Also on this elevation are four more, sh uh, sorry, four balconies, as you can see, uh, two on the uh, upper floor and two on the second floor. Uh, those are mat with black metal railings. Uh, to access those balconies, the applicants are asking to alter five of these rear-facing windows to accommodate doors. And, uh, and they're noted on the plan as well. Um, and on this elevation also is the four more of those shed dormers. Uh, again, similar cladding and roofing as the front. And finally, the roofing on the entire building uh, is to be replaced. The, the shingle roof is to be replaced with a standing seam profile metal roof uh, and and the uh, as you can see on the bottom right of the picture is a small one-story addition uh, it's a currently a concrete addition and the applicants are proposing to clad that in a uh, in a horizontal wood siding to match the new rear addition these plans are prepared and attached to your agenda package um, by Michael Preston design uh, there is a, a cover letter uh, an overview of the project prepared by the agent for the applicant, uh, Mr. Markle uh, from Robert Bergon uh, Construction and Associates. 
And in 2013, there was a heritage impact statement required for this project uh, prepared by Andrew Hill, a heritage consultant. Uh, and that too has been attached to your agenda package for reference. So in terms of our review, um, the property is an important cultural heritage resource in the city. It reflects the past commercial use of this portion of Ontario Street, this portion of the city. Uh, the owner is intending to renovate the building in order to accommodate a new expanded use uh, while conserving the cultural heritage value. Many of the alterations proposed have a positive impact on the cultural heritage value of the property, uh, including replacing the modern roofing with period appropriate uh, standing seam roofing, uh, cladding over a later concrete addition with wood siding, uh, and converting a carriage opening to a person door to better showcase that, that attribute. Um, the subject application includes uh, a number of more uh, substantial alterations, such as the, the eight shed dormers, um, the addition, of course, and the uh, rear changes to the rear window openings. Um, in order to convert the attic space to a functional space for residential use, the applicant is proposing a series of shed dormers. It's important to note that these dormers are set back approximately four meters or more than 13 feet from the face of the building and are only one meter tall. Um, they won't be taller than the ridge of the roof uh, and the dormers are to be clad in a dark gray, like a charcoal siding uh, with dark roofing that matches the new roofing of the overall building. The proposed height setback and color choice will allow the dormers to blend with the roof while still conserving the original pitch profile of the gabled roof. Um, so turning to the addition, in order to meet the accessibility and safety requirements, the applicant is proposing to construct uh, this three-story addition. Uh, again, as I noted, it's for stairwell, entrance, uh, and elevator. The new addition is to be clad in a horizontal wood siding with a gabled roof that matches the, uh, the roofing of the main building. Uh, the new addition, while it is three stories tall, will not be taller than the adjoining heritage building. It is proposed to be centrally located on the rear facade of the building uh, in order to utilize the existing historic carriageway uh, entrance as the, the main entrance point and to minimize the appearance of the new addition along Ontario and Williams Streets. Uh, comments were received from members of the Heritage Committee um, that, that noted that to help uh, the new addition blend more seamlessly uh, and not compete with the heritage building that the applicants should choose a light gray tone for the siding uh, and the applicants have agreed to this recommendation uh, and a condition of approval has been added requiring the, the applicants to provide a sample of their color choice to heritage staff for review and approval. Uh, so the turning to the balconies in order to provide outdoor amenity space uh, the tenants of the new buildings uh, the for the tenants of the new buildings. A series of new balconies are proposed at the rear of Hardy's buildings. Uh, the balconies are to be constructed of metal and painted black uh, to match the color scheme of the building. Uh, and staff have included a condition of approval requiring compliance with the city's masonry policy uh, during construction of these features. Uh, and then, or of course, to access these balconies, five of the rear facing window openings are proposed to be lengthened and converted to doors. Uh, changing original openings um, on heritage buildings, particularly those noted as attributes, is never desirable um, from a conservation perspective. However, the width of these openings and the rhythm of this fenestration pattern will be conserved and, uh, and retained. Further, th these openings are located at the rear of the heritage building and not on either of the primary facades of this building. And when uh, judged against the balance of all the extensive conservation efforts proposed by the applicant, to retain the features of this building, such as the carriageway, the roof profile, et cetera, uh, and adaptive reusing this building for uh, with period appropriate materials. The alteration of these particular openings is considered acceptable uh, and, uh, and will help conserve the overall character of this property. So the proposed work will permit the proposed adaptive reuse of the property uh, while conserving and restoring its heritage attributes, um, planning staff, uh, are of the opinion that the proposal will uphold the heritage conservation objectives of the city's official plan, uh, the ministry's guiding principles and the uh, federal uh, standards and guidelines. We circulated this application to our um, technical agencies. Uh, planning team noted that there is an active site plan control application 
uh, respecting this uh, addition and renovation that is awaiting Heritage Act approval before final approval can be granted. And a number of the technical comments that we received from uh, folks like Building, Environment, Engineering, and Utilities Kingston uh, will be addressed through that site plan control uh, approval process. Uh, the application was circulated to Heritage Kingston uh, in two separate circulations, and we thank you for, for putting the time into reviewing both of those separately. Uh, the comments that we received have been included uh, for both uh, circulations, have been included on Exhibit E of your agenda package, uh, and the responding members noted general support for the uh, proposed interventions. So, Mr. Chair, uh, staff recommend approval of this application subject to the conditions uh, in our report, and there are two slides for this recommendation. One that you see before you is the overall uh, alterations, and the second slide is the, the conditions that we're recommending. And I believe the owner, uh, Ms. Oliver, and her agent, uh, Mr. Markle, are here to answer questions if, uh, if necessary. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, committee members, questions? Wave your hand and we'll acknowledge you. Jane, and then Don. Yes, just a quick question about the windows in the dormers, wondering what they're going to be. Um, my preference would be traditional hung sash. I'm just wondering what the decision is here. Thanks. Do we have an answer there from uh, anybody? Chris or Diana? Uh, yes, uh, that's um, the the windows in the dormers will be consistent with the windows that have already been done. So a traditional wood window, and I uh, don't see any problem with either a single or double hung sash. They're not very tall, so probably a uh, a single sash would be fine. Okay, thank you, Don Taylor. I just um, noticed that. Um, the reference in the addition, um, what were called blind dormers. And um, I, I guess I should have asked why they're there. Uh, in general, it's not good to have uh, kind of meaningless features on a roof. So I assume there is some purpose for those blind dormers at the top of the addition. Mr. Markle? Absolutely. Uh, yes, thanks for the question. The, um, the dormers are added to bring a little bit of natural light into the bedrooms in that part of the development. Sorry, no. This is the sort of elevator and staircase addition uh, at the rear. Uh, it's not, I don't believe it's a residential uh, part of the building and those dormers have were called blind dormers, meaning I guess they have no windows. So uh, uh, I don't know if uh, someone can produce uh, a, a figure, but uh, uh, could you just check that again? Yes. Um, could uh, could the host put the uh, that elevation up on the uh, on the screen so everyone can see uh, what Don is referring to? Yep. Uh We'll have that up just momentarily. We'll let the uh, the meeting host get that up. So we're looking for the uh, rear elevation slide here in the concept plans. That's it. Oh, back one. No, there, no, back James. one, James. No, that's fine. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Markle. Right, okay, I see, I misunderstood the question, I'm sorry. Uh, those um, will provide additional height to the, um, to the elevator shaft without more or less um, making the top square. Um, elevators need, uh, I don't have an exact figure because we haven't hired the elevator supplier yet, um, and that'll be a fine point of design, but uh, at the top of the shaft, you need a hoist beam and it typically projects I'm going to say about a meter above the top of the travel path. Um, so you need as much height as you can. And the, uh, the idea there was to avoid going with a flat roof. 
Thank you. I understand. That's fine. Other questions? If not, I'm going to pick up one that Don, you mentioned in um, uh, your DASH report because uh, I was with you on that tour and, and Diane, you remember you showed us many years ago some fascinating things on the interior upstairs. Um, is there any chance that any of those will be retained? And I know we're not talking interior, but it, it's really just an interesting question. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, I can then. Uh, okay, no, uh, the plan is to retain as much of the interior, like that Hopefully. wheel, remember the yeah. wheel? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The plan is to keep all, as much all of that as possible, so. Okay, thank you very much. I know it's not part of this, and I know you've already done that in the rest of the building, so it's nice to, uh, to hear that, I think. Other questions about the application as printed, presented? Mr. Chair, I believe uh, Ms. Harris has her hand raised, her virtual hand. Her virtual hand, Ms. Harris. Hello, um, I just have a oh, question about the uh, new addition on the back. Um, based on the location, it looks like it's going to actually go over top of a portion of the existing concrete block that's back there, rather than being next to it and going in completely new. And I, I didn't see anything in the paperwork about a change to the existing concrete block in order to put in the new addition. I'm just wondering if I missed it or if it's included somewhere in there. Mr. Markle. Yes, there is a small area of demolition on the existing cinder block uh, one story addition to make room for the staircase. I'm sorry, where can I find that in the paperwork? Um, let me see if... Uh, wait. It's probably on our page 33, uh, 32. Yes, you can see on uh, drawing number A3, um, the, the outline of the cinder block building shown dashed. Um, it's not specifically called up for demolition, but it, 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 it is, it's the same footprint as the entire new exit stair. Right. I just, I didn't think that it was stated within the paperwork that there was a section of demolition as well as the addition. It's in the diagram, which is where I found it, but I, I didn't see it stated in text. Pro probably not. I don't think it was considered of heritage significance, so it may not have been uh, dealt, uh, dealt with. Mr. Chair, I believe Mr. Leary has uh, his hand up and can add oh, some more context. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would only add to the discussion that uh, it is noted, as, uh, as mentioned in the slideshow on the site plan, A-1. You can see clearly yeah. where the, that portion is to be removed. Uh, and I think uh, the member is is correct. It's not specifically noted as a demo. Um, I think it's been uh, included as part of the overall alteration uh, request here. Um, it wasn't pulled out specifically as our practice is not to highlight uh, demos that are uh, associated with an alteration. Um, the demo uh, process under the Heritage Act is more for complete removal without a replacement. So we've sort of wrapped it all into one package today as part of the alteration application. I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for that one, Zoe. Uh, I don't see other hands at present. Please wave or whatever, no. So, um, members of the public. Mr. Chair, we do not have any members of the public in attendance at this time. Thank you. So we need a motion then to move and, uh, and the second uh, can be amended, can be deferred if need be. Councillor Doherty, did I see you moving? Thank you. Moved by Councillor Doherty, seconded by Jane McFarlane. Further discussion? Seeing none, those in favour? Those opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you for that presentation, uh, Mr. Markle and uh, Dr. Oliver, and good luck.
we move on to McDonald Park, 1 King Street East officially. Uh, I can't remember. Is this Amy? Yes, this is uh, Miss Didrikson. Miss Didrikson's files. Didrikson, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can is my microphone working? Okay, it's just fine for me. Great. Um, yes, this is uh, an application under Section Forty Two of the Heritage Act uh, to undertake shoreline and landscape works at McDonald Park at One King Street East. Um, it's designated under Part 4 and 5 of the Ontario Heritage Act. Next slide, please, Derek. Uh, McDonald Park is at, located along the shoreline of Lake Ontario, south of the intersection with Barry Street and King Street West. Um, this slide is just intended to highlight that the property does not include the federally owned parcel around Murney Tower, uh, which is known as 2 King Street West. Um, the subject site contains the Newlands Pavilion and the Richardson Bathhouse, um, uh, the Cross of Sacrifice, among other commemorative monuments. Um, the next slide is uh, zoomed into the area of the proposed alterations, um, which will be located to the south of the Richardson Bathhouse in the area known as um, Richardson Beach. Uh, enhancements to the beach were identified as a top priority in the waterfront master plan approved by Council in 2016. Uh, proposed alterations are intended to enhance shoreline protection, improve access and views to the water, um, and to improve the overall accessibility of this portion of the site. Next slide, please, Derek. Uh, the park is designated under, or was designated under part four in 1980 and 1984 uh, with an updated designation bylaw passed in 2007. Um, the reasons for designation and heritage attributes of the park are extensive. Uh, the designation bylaw is included as exhibit B to the staff report. Um, Specifically relating to the park, um, the, uh, the bylaw describes the contextual value as a place of open space and leisure with important views of Lake Ontario uh, and being defined uh, by extensive public open spaces, um, including Richardson Beach, with, which uh, includes significant reserves of urban forest and link the area to the recreational opportunities of the waterfront. Uh, the property is also part of the Old Sydenham Heritage Conservation District uh, and is rated as significant to the district. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the next few slides um, include photos of the existing site. This is the, the bathhouse. Um, it's important to highlight that the alterations don't include any material change to the Bathhouse building itself, but rather to the pathways and access stairs that lead to the building from the shoreline and from the west. Uh, the next few slides, Derek, if you don't mind, um, include uh, existing conditions of the shoreline. Um, these were provided by the Parks Department. Um, just illustrating, actually, <laughs> in the one just before Derek, sorry, um, the previous one just wanted to highlight that the, the trees that are existing there on the south side um, are, will be retained as part of the proposal um, to Maples. Um, and then the next few slides just illustrate the views from the east and the west. Please, Derek. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and sorry, that's the west and central shoreline there, um, existing conditions. And then I think the next one is the view towards Emily Street. Um, and then the next slide, Derek. Um, this, uh, the next few slides illustrate the concept plans for the alterations. Um, for the to the shoreline and access features, um, staff reviewed the concept plans along policy alongside policy in the old Sydney HCD plan, the official plan, and the federal standards and guidelines. 
Uh, the proposal avoids impacts to heritage attributes identified in the Part 4 designation bylaw and the features noted in the old Sydenham plan, um, as well as to protected views that are detailed in the City of Kingston official plan, um, including one down the down Emily Street. Um, and just to highlight, um, in particular, areas of archaeological potential and significance are um, are mentioned specifically in the old Sydenham Heritage Conservation District Plan for McDonald Park. Um, and the archaeological potential of the site will be, um, or archaeology will be um, addressed through the, the proposal by ensuring the proper clearances are in place before proceeding with ground disturbance. Um, and conditions in the recommendation detail the remaining monitoring work um, and uh, assessment work required uh, based on a review of the assessment work completed to date. Um, next slide, please. Um, this slide provides uh, some further details on the changes proposed. Um, these drawings were, were uploaded to DASH. I hope everyone was able to access them. Um, they were, um, the changes include um, some wood lounges beside the reinstated concrete stairs at the south of the building and planters around the existing maples, um, accessible paths and lookout areas, as well as steps into the water. Next slide, please, Derek. Uh, here's a cross section of the pathway adjacent to the, the, the Richardson bathhouse. Um, and the cross section of the stairs to the water. Um, an expansion joint is shown between the concrete landing and the bathhouse uh, to avoid impacts with differential settlement. Um, next slide, please, Derek. Um, this slide um, illustrates a cross section of the wood loungers that are proposed to be built into the sloping shoreline as well as the steel railing of the concrete steps, which is proposed to be black. Um, the wood loungers are not proposed to be painted. Um, and I think the next slide, please, Derek, is the um, recommendation in the, in the staff report um, for approval based on a review of applicable policy and guidelines. Um, the scope of work is detailed um, in these six points. Um, the scope of work in includes the reinstatement of the concrete stairs in the same location at the lakeside entrance. Um, the need for this replacement was questioned in the comments we received uh, from an HK member um, in the technical circulation. Uh, the applicant uh, provided a response and that's included in, um, in one of the exhibits to the report. Um, just explaining that the stairway will be impacted by the installation of the accessible ramps. Um, retaining portions of the concrete steps would be difficult and, and costly. Um, the, the full replacement will provide a consistent um, aesthetic and lifespan for the step and ramp assembly um, was part of the explanation there. Um, I could just move on to the, um, the conditions that were identified that are in the next slide. Um, so standard conditions are included with respect to works being undertaken in accordance with the Sydenham Heritage Conservation District Plan and completing any required um, planning applications or building permits. Um, the opportunity for heritage planning staff to review detailed plans submitted as part of any required building permit is included. Um, as part of the technical circulation, the forestry department did request additional tree protection details and preservation plans, um, and as such, a condition is included in, um, in number eight. Um, the opportunity for heritage planning staff to review the details is also included, um, just based on the significance of the uh, reserves of the urban forest identified in uh, the attributes of McDonald's Park. Um, and on the next slide, Derek, um, conditions nine and 10 carry forward the recommendations from the archeological assessments, um, including monitoring in specific areas uh, during excavation and clearance of a specific area um, detailed in the 2019 stage three report. 
um, and then any de um, any minor deviations from the plans uh, which meet the intent of the approval um, and don't impact heritage attributes are recommended to be delegated to the director of planning services. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. I understand there's staff from Parks Development uh, that submitted the application here as well. Okay, thank you very much, Amy. Uh, committee members, questions? Mr. Chair, just a reminder that this is a part five application, so maybe we can oh, it is a part the five. dash oh. comments. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, dash comments, questions, comments, did they get them right? Councillor Doherty. I just want to say that I'm actually quite excited about this project, giving giving the bathhouse life again. And I know a lot of people in the community are really excited, so I'm, I'm glad we're moving ahead with this. Okay, thank you. Don and Jane, you were the ones that sent in um, comments. Are they correct? Seeing nodding from both of you, okay. Uh, members of the public, do we have any members yet? Uh, we do not, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we go on to committee members who have questions now. Don. Uh, just, I noticed a bit of inconsistency between the recommendations and the conditions. Recommendations say the wooden loungers would not be painted and the conditions say that uh, outdoor wooden materials be treated for exterior exposure. Um, that's kind of vague. It doesn't necessarily mean paint, but uh, I'm sure it's not, not, they're not going to be sprayed with Pentox or something like that uh, if, these, if there's going to be contact with uh, bare skin and so on. So I think there needs to be some attention given to exactly how that wood is going to be treated. Amy, do you want to try that one? Um, yeah, if I can just, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, to explain, the condition is um, intended to carry forward some direction in, uh, from the old Sydenham Heritage Conservation District plan that um, I think the intent overall is just to avoid uh, wood features deteriorating, not that this is a, um, a feature that's, that's existing or that uh, um, is necessarily, um, it's, standard I think to um, and mainly intended to ensure the the feet uh, would um, doesn't need to be um, to preserve the maintenance to assist in maintenance um, going forward of the the wood um, didn't mean to cause any confusion between the fact that I, I understand there is no intention to to paint the wood and uh, parks department might have more to say about that but Anybody from Parks want to comment there? I would say we can maybe ask uh, if Mr. Unsworth yeah, Neil has here. any uh, comments. We'll just get you to unmute Neil and see if there's any additional information you can provide us. There you go. Go ahead, Neil. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, we do two or three different um, natural styled ceiling methods on, uh, on outdoor wood. Um, this one's harder because people are going to sit on it in their bathing suits. So we want to make sure that it doesn't stick to them um, or, or is toxic. Uh, sometimes we'll use boiled linseed oil with a mixture boiled with terps and shellac, real shellac powder. Um, but this case that will, that will have a really strong smell with the terps. So we'll eliminate that and the shellac will stick to the, our guests. So we'll eliminate that. It's likely they'll do a, they'll do a linseed oil application, uh, probably a couple coats and then let it dry. Um, the wood is not determined yet, but we're leaning towards fir, um, sort of a combination of resistance to decay and ability to um, withstand some abuse from vandalism and not splinter on your back of your legs. So we're leaning towards fir at this point. Um, but yeah, I think we'll be able to satisfy that condition, no problem, and make it appropriate and safe for kids and swimming people. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Matthew. Hi there, thank you. Um, thanks, Neil, that was great. I, I was just gonna suggest, I think, yeah, like if you were to use a resin-rich wood, like hemlock or something, 
you, you'd have good luck and you could use a more sympathetic and tolerant and preservative like linseed oil. So it sounds like you already know what you're doing. So good work. <laughs> good, yes. thank you. The, the yeah. hemlock we love. Oh, sorry, just, Neil. Yeah. yeah, the hemlock we love to death. Um, it's the cheap, durable, relatively local. It, most of it comes from Quebec, but anyways, it, it's we love it to death, but it shakes out really badly. Uh, and that can form a really nasty splinter for little kids on their toes. Uh, so we're trying to use hemlock in some of our bigger beams and things that are above, you know, a little bit less contact oriented. But yeah, no, it's dynamite. That's why we typically go to the fir as an alternate. Um, we would go to we would go to um, red cedar, but it just gets destroyed with vandalism. So thanks for the comment, but we are trying to balance. And they're timber based loungers. They're not planks. These are these are sort of three by four and three by three timber loungers so they're fairly robust uh, but yeah no um, we do put that in our arsenal of possible wood selections great thank you uh, Jane yes uh, just wanted to say thanks for your response to my concern uh, about um, <laughs> uh, making these loungers sort of accessible to people who may have some mobility issues uh, and I just hope you'll consider that um, the loungers are a really neat idea but we need to make sure that everyone is able to access them thanks good I don't see any more hands or anybody waving. So uh, where do we get to? Committee members are asking questions. Uh, final comments. Everybody had their say. Last chance. Okay, the motion then needs to be moved and seconded and it can't be amended at that point. So I'm looking for a mover. Uh, I won't read it all the way through. William Kelly, thank you very much. And seconder. Moya. You're sitting out in the garden, Moya. Lovely. Wow. Um, moved then by uh, William Kelly, seconded by Moya. I won't read the complete thing. You've seen it on the screen. You have it in front of you. Those in favour? Those opposed? That then is carried. Thank you, those who presented. Thank you, City, for working on the bathhouse and on the swimming. That moves us on to... Um, when I turn the page over, 15 McDonald Avenue. This, uh, Ryan, are you looking after this one? Mr. Chair, uh, the uh, fire f planner for the file is uh, Miss Grant, and I also believe that uh, the heritage planner for the application is in attendance, um, Mark Gladys. I do only see uh, Jillian Wilson, who's also involved, but I'm thinking they may all be in the same room, so I'm going to unmute oh, okay. uh, Miss Wilson and uh, Perhaps they can uh, speak, but I also see Miss Grant has her hand up, so she may have um, an introduction, and then we can go to the the applicants if that's okay with you. Yeah, and I just remind members that this is a pre-consultation report. We have, don't get many of them, so there is no motion at the end. There are you can make comments, and they will be listened to. I'm sure. I know. Um, okay. So uh, go ahead, Janice, and then we'll turn Janice. it over to the applicants. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Derek. And through you, Mr. Chair. So I just wanted to offer just a little bit of an introduction because I know this one is a little bit maybe confusing and there's a lot of moving pieces. So this is a complex project that the committee saw, um, I think about a year ago for the construction of some new buildings at the back of this site. Um, at that time, there wasn't any detailed works approved for the actual rectory building, which is proposed to be converted into four dwelling units. So based on the submission, I think that the committee and staff had a few questions, understandably, about kind of what is proposed here and the timeline and um, what is being done. So we thought that committee and staff would benefit from a pre-consultation meeting with the applicant just in order to have some of those questions answered, um, be able to kind of flag any additional information that's needed. And um, so just to confirm, there is no recommendation being put forward today by staff. We'll be taking all of the committee's questions and comments down and we'll be having a follow up meeting with the applicant to make sure that we have the information that we need in order to make a subsequent recommendation. So you will be hearing from us in the future on this. We're aiming for September, but I think depending on the information we need, we'll have to have discussions with the applicant on that. So um, if you have any questions for staff about process after the applicant makes their presentation, we're happy to take those. But the applicant will be fielding questions specific related to the project and the planned works. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, I believe we have um, 
labeled as uh, Julian Wilson on the line, but I'm, I'm going to assume uh, Mr. Gladys is there as well. Yes. Oh, Mark. Oh. Hi. All right. Mark. Go yeah. ahead, Mark. Good morning. Uh, yes, Jillian and uh, Sandy Wilson are here with me in their offices today. So thank you very much for uh, making the time for us this morning. I just wanted to start with some background. Uh, since late May, uh, we have been proposing to get staff and Heritage Community members to join us on the site to see the activity and to review the decisions that we're addressing. And we've been unsuccessful, unsuccessful in doing so, and that's perhaps due to the COVID-19 uh, restrictions. Regarding timelines, uh, started work um, on the ZBA, well, finalized work on the ZBA eight months ago. And uh, immediately after the site planning agreement was uh, signed on June 18th, the owner was naturally anxious to begin. Um, with the zoning and the site plan agreements in place and 300,000 development charges paid, the owner is ready to roll. So the uh, construction manager has experienced difficulties in securing uh, skilled trades like Santini masonry and simple gutter roofers. And we've had difficulty securing a local architect. So we're so fortunate to have Sandy and Jillian Wilson with us uh, to work on this project uh, when they joined uh, us in June. Since uh, staff asked the owner to stop work, Sullivan Construction has had to let two people go and workflow has been interrupted. Obviously these delays will affect the, uh, when the rental units will become available and owners are aiming for the end of the year. And this could now be pushed back to mid 2021. We'll also lengthen unfortunately the disruptive construction period affecting nearby homeowners. It took nearly two months between uh, the building department, uh, health unit and utilities to clear the demolition permit for the parish hall. And it was originally slated to be demolished on June 2nd and was delayed until uh, August 10th. And it's these kinds of delays that are wreaking havoc on the project's timelines and schedules. And it's important to remember that the owner is ending the 13 years this building has sat uh, vacant and deteriorating. And the owner is spending 1.3 million on the rehabilitation on top of the purchase price. So we're asking uh, uh, this morning for approval to proceed with uh, a number of items. So I'm gonna just kind of go through them and perhaps uh, Derek, we could go to the first slide. Thank you. All of the work to date on the exterior has been under the aegis of maintenance and repairs outlined in the HIS addendum that uh, was submitted. And this is to ensure the building is weatherproofed uh, before interior work can begin. The interior is not subject to a designation bylaw and has been uh, removed to create four apartments as per permitted by the zoning and uh, removal of all designated substances as outlined in the designated substances uh, survey and structural condition reports which were also included in the addendum for your information. So I'll just go over briefly the different building elements to be repaired. So the first is the original slate roof which is being repaired and conserved with replacement slate units uh, with no change in color materials or design from the original. The new slates have been installed to stop the roof from leaking and uh, as it is at the end of its service life. And the new uh, repairs to this roof is about 50,000 as opposed to the construction the cost of a new uh, slate roof which is about 300,000. Uh, the next slide please. Thank you. So chimneys are being repaired and conserved. The Southwest chimney is now uh, being assessed as being in much worse condition after a detailed review by Santine Masonry. We're putting scaffolding around it and it must be rebuilt. As seen in the pictures, uh, picture on the left, uh, you can see daylight through the chimney and there is very little mortar left in the bricks. And um, we initially had budgeted about 25,000 to repair the three chimneys and that we're way over on that now. Next uh, slide. Okay, so um, water penetration into the basement of the foundation is being addressed and mason repairs were undertaken at less than 10% of the surface area of the area has been repaired. And uh, the repointing of the masonry is undertaken in conformity with the city's policy on masonry, which uh, Santini Masonry is uh, very familiar with. Next slide, please. So this is just a picture of the interior. As I mentioned, that it has been uh, completely abated and uh, interior finishes removed in order to prepare for the reconfiguration of the space yep. for apartments. Next slide. Yep. Okay, this is uh, just uh, some images. We did provide a uh, sort of a brief, brief uh, overview of the uh, as on condition of the windows in the building. And uh, this is just a variety of images hit there. 
So go on to the next one, please. Okay, so regarding the windows, which are not a listed heritage attribute, the owner is going with the advice from the required reports and studies that have been undertaken and paid for. Both the HSC engineering noise study, which is a requirement of the city, and the Concord engineering structural assessment advise the owner on the need for external noise abatement with double glazed windows to meet MOECC standards, um, as well as commenting on the general deterioration of the as found units and the presence of lead paint throughout. This is a commercial application, so being energy efficient and maintenance free, of course, is important to the owners. Um, a multi-residential building really can't be rented to tenants with repaired single pane windows and lead paint on them facing a noisy street in this condition, and we would expect this not to be acceptable to prospective tenants. The owner has purchased new custom-made vinyl windows at a cost of approximately $70,000, and they have not been installed. They are in a storage container on the site. And the example shown here, uh, we feel looks good and um, the unattractive storm windows that you see in the originals would be removed. So I'm going to now turn it over, just next slide please. Um, we're gonna turn it over to Jillian and Sandy to talk about uh, the proposed addition and uh, the veranda. So this uh, slide shows the existing conditions of the veranda and the addition. We propose to build on the existing addition uh, above it uh, for a bedroom for the fourth unit. Uh, we intend to keep the foot, keep the addition and uh, add to it, uh, keep the footprint rather than uh, shrinking it at all so that we can keep the structure and do minimal uh, demolition. So on the next slide, you'll see uh, the south elevation. Uh, we're proposing to reclad the veranda to match the new addition, which would be in a, a, a party board wood style paneling, uh, which will stand up well to uh, weather and uh, any kind of uh, disturbance. Uh, you'll see that the uh, addition to the left has uh, a, a balcony set in, which you'll see um, there are doors in the next slide that would lead to the balcony. Um, so you can't, the, the balcony here is a little hidden, but there are those, that top window on the addition is doors uh, that would lead up to the balcony and it, uh, and the windows below are in the existing uh, size of the, the garage door. I believe the next slide is the north elevation showing, uh, again, the, there is a small um, vestibule on the back which will clad in, to match the addition and the veranda, and uh, a window um, that is the same size as the existing window in the garage. And the last slide just shows uh, the, um, th that we originally in the and there was a staircase, an exterior staircase going to the window above the central door uh, that would have blocked that whole facade, but we've rearranged, we've redesigned the interior to remove that uh, staircase so that we can have all the entrances um, and staircases interior to the building so we preserve that facade um, for heritage purposes and uh, to keep the beauty of that, of that, uh, that side of the building. So I'll uh, just uh, wrap up on uh, what we're asking for today. So we're really hoping to, uh, you know, get uh, the feedback from the committee and to uh, hopefully uh, achieve approvals for the work identified. Um, actions were proceeding, uh, so we felt that it was uh, critical to get into uh, seeing you today and getting the materials before you uh, for your review. Uh, so just in conclusion, we all want the same thing, the successful rehabilitation of this building into high quality rental apartments. Um, as so often the case, circumstances alter uh, cases. So uh, the start of construction has been difficult and the owners are frustrated by experiencing repeated delays at this time. And we've had uh, some deficiencies that have been discovered such as water getting into the basement and one chimney that could potentially collapse in the newly repaired roof. 
So frankly, you know, the building condition has proved to be more deteriorated than initially, and budgets are now going into overages. So we are really happy that Ryan is uh, coming to the site on Friday and we can review everything together. So again, like we're asking to proceed with the application and permits. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark and uh, uh, Gillian. We, uh, th Ryan, do you want to add anything at this point or can we go on to committee questions? I think unless uh, Mr. Oh, there, Mr. Leary's unmuted himself. I'll let him go ahead. I, I believe this is uh, Ms. Grant's file. I'll let oh. her uh, chime in if there's uh, something That's more to right. add. That's right, I'm sorry. Janice, do you want to chime in at this point or do you want to wait for committee comments? Um, that's our, I don't think I have anything to add right now. If the committee has any questions for staff, we're happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Committee, questions, comments? See, Mr. McCartney has raised his uh, virtual hand there, Mr. Chair. Okay, Matthew. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, <clears throat> sorry, was this a pre-meeting, like a pre-consultation? This is, yes. Oh, okay. So how does that work with them proceeding with a bunch of work that falls within the scope of getting a heritage permit? Um, I'll get Janice to answer that one. Thanks. Hello? <laughs> Hello. Okay, yep. sorry. Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. I think I unlocked my microphone or I couldn't figure it out. Um, I think Ms. Gummo has her hand raised and wanted to address this question for the committee. Okay, Andrea. Thank you. Apologies for the confusion there. Um, so we've we've been very clear with the applicants that w what work um, requires approval and what doesn't. Um, we are asking them to come before the committee today to essentially get your feedback. Um, so I think I think um, any observations you have or direction for them at this point is valuable. Um, we do encourage applicants to always receive approvals prior to doing work. Thank you. Thank you. So as I understand it, the work that has been done is the replacement of the slate tiles on the roof, uh, right. some chimney repair, some foundation repair, and the buying but not the installation of new windows. I is that right, Mark? That's correct. Okay, so uh, that's, we're looking then, we, the windows are off to one side, but we're wondering what to do with the slate tiles on the roof, the chimney repair, the foundations repair, plus the general design uh, proposed ahead. Yes, okay, so again, questions and comments are done. Well, I guess, uh, I mean, this is a rather confusing situation, but I guess we can have some sympathy for the applicant's uh, desire to go ahead with the essential work. And as far as I can tell, the work on the roof and the chimneys is appropriate and uh, the committee, committee members will probably be comfortable with uh, that work proceeding, but uh, uh, the committee cannot approve anything here today. But uh, yeah. in that sense, um, some of that work might be con considered uh, emergency work and uh, uh, staff could perhaps give approval, for instance, for uh, the continuing of chimney repairs and uh, basement uh, um, um, foundation repairs and, and so forth. So that's, I think, up to staff. Uh, I, I said, in general, I, these kinds of things look quite appropriate. I guess what most concerns the um, myself and probably other committee members is uh, that so much work has been undertaken on the in interior and uh, particularly the windows. And I would um, like to uh, emphasize that uh, no one should be under the apprehension that replacement of windows is, uh, uh, does not require approval. Um, original windows of a heritage building are always heritage attributes. And I think the, in the um, old designation uh, description, the uh, fenestration, the design and architectural values statement mentions the fenestration. And moreover, about a year ago, when it was clear that uh, there were going to be substantial uh, renovations to the rectory, the uh, Heritage Properties Working Group 
uh, reviewed the description and came up with a new list of, or a revised list of heritage attributes. And that has been in the hands of staff uh, for a year. And uh, it's uh, uh, certainly disappointing to me that uh, staff didn't immediately go forward to update the um, designation. And if not that, that the, um, the uh, uh, details of that, of the revised attributes wasn't made available to the applicant. So it should be clear to everybody just what's important uh, in planning the renovations. So just to emphasize, uh, nothing that I've seen from photos or from comments of, uh, of the um, uh, experts who have looked at this building leads me to think that the windows need replacement. I don't think they do. Uh, the fact that they've been, some of them have been removed is not a bad thing because it's uh, maybe easier to uh, repotty and repaint them uh, when uh, when they're out of the uh, uh, out of the sash. But uh, this whole business of how the windows and the uh, wind associated trim is going to be handled needs to be carefully looked at, and I think it needs the assessment by qualified. Windows expert, of which Kingston has many, and uh, then that could come back to the committee for, for approval. Uh, so I think I'll uh, stop there. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I'll go back to Matthew. Hi there. Thanks again, Peter. Um, yeah, so I'm going to jump on a few of Don's points as well, just to drive them home. I think it's worth noting that. Uh, I think the uh, applicant suggested that single glazings weren't suitable. Um, it should be understood that there's been like extensive research to show that a well-fitted storm to a single glazing actually performs better than a gas filled. If, if you want to check into that, Roger Hunt of the Society for Protection of Ancient Buildings uh, in conjunction with the Welsh University, which I can't enunciate their name. Uh, they have uh, some good literature on that. If you want to reach out, I can put you in contact with that just for your own reference too. It's worth noting. So you don't just write them off, which kind of puts me on to my next point, similar to what Don said. Kingston is full of like, uh, including the country's like most uh, well-regarded uh, millwork conservator, uh, people who can comment on these sorts of things and not so someone who's trained in like civil engineering. Anyways, um, one other point that I think might be helpful moving forward is I was reading the, the part about the waterproofing the basement from the inside. It's one important thing about that is that your foundation is still, if there is a water problem, it's still exposed to water. And so it doesn't really, it just solves the problem for interior finishes, but it kind of kicks the can down the road because you're still seeing water into the actual structure. So just, I would maybe think about drawing more attention to that and maybe trying to deal with it on the outside or with grading on the outside or Anyways, thank you. Good, thank you, Matthew. Uh, William. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I understand Don's point and, uh, and Matthew's too about the windows. Um, but I think, you know, we need to look at some form of compromise uh, in reference to uh, energy efficiency uh, and 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 I do listen to you Matthew and you say some type of storm over top of those windows might be appropriate but I have to give them credit for the two windows that they did create for the total sum of seven thousand uh, dollars where they uh, put the arch in and match them specifically to the existing windows so when I see something like that, it gives me hope that this is the continuous process they may do to replace the windows in an equal manner of a more uh, energy efficient design. So I, I like to keep an open mind and uh, maybe we could compromise somewhat there. Thank you. Thank you. Jane? Yes. Uh, I'm going to comment on the windows and I'm going to refer to uh, 
Um, my response on Dash, um, I really feel that um, uh, an assessment and inventory should have been done uh, regarding repair or replacement. Um, I'm going to refer to the policy on window renovations in heritage buildings and also the standards and guidelines for the conservation of historic places in Canada. 4.3.5 re windows, doors and storefronts. And it's not a foregone conclusion that new windows are going to be more energy efficient or quieter than uh, restoration and repair. And what has happened to these windows does not follow those standards and guidelines for historic places in Canada. Uh, and the Ontario Heritage Trust has also a very good article on window rehabilitation and, and restoration and guidelines that should have been consulted. I still feel that we need an inventory to decide. It's really unfortunate that these vinyl windows have been, uh, have been bought. Um, and I, I wouldn't necessarily consider vinyl windows for a heritage property either. Perhaps wood interiors with um, cladding uh, would be a more appropriate um, choice. So I think the windows still need to be looked at whether or not they've been half, uh, you know, dismantled from the interior. Um, and I, I'd also like to point out that uh, our uh, heritage um, policy on window renovations and heritage buildings includes the whole window, which is not just the exterior of the window. Um, the other thing, I, the question I have with regarding, regarding the uh, link, I'm confused now. Uh, it seemed to, today you seem to refer, the applicant seemed to refer to not uh, the demolition of the garage, uh, but adding onto it. So I would really like that um, uh, clarified. My understanding is that the garage is to be demolished from the plans at least, and then uh, a new building built. So if, if the applicant could clarify that, that would be great, thanks. So at this time, we're working with the structural uh, engineer to confirm that the existing garage can stay in place and we will build uh, the addition to the top, but the, the garage will remain uh, intact and we'll just clad it to match, uh, to match the uh, addition above. Okay, um, Jane, do you want to answer that? And then we'll go on to Andrea. Yeah, Jane, you need to unmute. Uh, yes, sure. So then I'm assuming you're going to be sending new plans around that will reflect that because what we're so looking that at- That is reflecting the plans. Pardon me? The, the plans that I sent originally were had the original garage intact then why are we approving a demolition of that garage or why why is the demolition of that garage that may have been a previous set but uh, as far as we came on board in june and it's been our intention to keep the garage um, as long as the structural uh engineer okays it which i have they have it's just not writing yet Okay, we're going to need some updating on that because when I look at this description of proposal, it actually says, uh, hmm, let's see, demolition, uh, proposing to demolish the existing garage on the site and replace the two-story demo uh, addition. So I feel like I'm not working with all of the information that I need to have in order to understand what you're proposing here. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, Andrea. Thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to pick up on Don's comments about the Heritage Properties Working Group um, input on the, the designation here. I wasn't aware of that work. So Ryan has now shared that with Janice and I. So we'll be having a look and we'll, we'll follow up as needed. Thank you for, for identifying that, Don. Good, thank you, Andrea. Um, Matthew, I'm gonna come back to you in just a moment, but does anybody else want to speak? This is Matthew's second time around. Councillor Doherty, I've got you here still, Matthew, don't worry. Am I, am I good to go? Thank you. Yes, uh, no, oh. Councillor Docket is just fine. Okay, um, you always have to wait until the unmute box pops up. Um, so I just wanted to, I'm always, I'm, 
my comment is about the garage. Um, and I understand that the, um, that the applicant is seeking input in which way to move forward. But um, I guess I'm just also interested in what other heritage P, uh, committee, committee members feel about this comment. So I'm just gonna say that I'm learning um, that with heritage buildings, we really do want to not use, not try to blend the kind of same materials because we want to distinguish between the new structure and the heritage structure. And I'm just wondering whether the new addition, including how the porch is going to be fixed up and the, the garage and the addition to the garage, whether uh, wood siding would be not much more appropriate instead of a, a reddish brick that is that will definitely not match the existing brick anyhow. So that's just a comment I'm interested in hearing from other committee members. So can you clarify, did you say you want, you want it to match or you don't? The idea is not to match it. Yes, and that's that's you'll never I'm you'll never be able to match the 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 brick anyhow. Uh, but I do notice that every, that most of the addition uh, you have a reddish kind of brick, at least in the drawings that you showed. So the question is, would it not be uh, more appropriate to use a different material, like perhaps wood siding? The the elevations show a horizontal siding. The the red brick is is only on the existing portion of the building. Okay. And I think I, I agree with Jane. Then I think I need to get a better idea of what the new proposal is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Matthew. Back to you then. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I I just wanted to follow up on. Uh, what uh, William said, I, I think, you know, it's also worth noting as far as energy efficiency, like the windows that are there are, that building's what, early 20th century, late, eight, eight, late 19th century. Uh, so it's had that entire lifespan and like, show me a vinyl window that's older than 35 years. Yeah. So, you know, I think as far as energy efficiency, that, that's like worth, worth adding. You know, because those go in the garbage, they don't get recycled or recovered. You can't make repairs to them. So that was my point. Okay, thank you very much. Jane? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, if we're talking about new plans, they certainly need to go up on Dash so that uh, Heritage Kingston members can review them. And I would like to just uh, also discuss the windows on the new addition or the revised garage and uh, the configuration of those windows. It seems like the windows uh, in the Heritage Building are uh, single windows for the most part. And I'm really concerned about the size and the double and triple windows that are more like picture windows, uh, especially on the west elevation. And I'm also concerned about the balcony, which is on the street side. And I think it might be more private if it were on the uh, Baden, I guess it's Baden Street yeah. side as opposed to McDonald. So I'm gonna put that out there. I did put it on my uh, uh, Dash comments, uh, but I, it's cer certainly we need to have an, an opportunity to look at these new designs and that needs to be posted on Dash and then an opportunity to comment on those, thanks. Okay, I see, or oh, I just seen Don's hand go up, Don. Uh, yes, if I could um, uh, follow up uh, on a couple of things. The, the uh, idea of um, keeping the garage and uh, building the, sorry, are you hearing me all right? Yep, yep. Uh, right. Uh, is is uh, an interesting one it's a new one but uh, I, I wouldn't rule it out but uh, one of the problems of course is that uh, you have this large uh, garage door opening to be filled in uh, into uh, windows of some form or another and so you're going to uh, have a problem uh, matching brick with the garage brick and then there's uh, the brick of the original building and the whole thing could look uh, 
uh, really, really inappropriate unless the uh, uh, some careful design is is uh, done uh, you know, so that the siding of this addition is uh, acceptable with the main building. So anyway, we look forward to further information on that. A couple of other points. Um, uh, it, it was really um, uh, regrettable that the interior has been gutted and uh, uh, the excuse is that uh, everything contains lead. And uh, you know, that's really unfortunate that that's happened. All of us grew up in houses with lead paint and I don't think we're visibly uh, suffering. Uh, many of us spent many hours scraping and painting those uh, wooden uh, features. And again, I don't think we survived. So unless the, um, there's a prospect of, re of new tenants spending a lot of time chewing up the siding and so on, uh, 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 sorry, not siding, but the trim, the door trim and so on, it could have been left in place and another coat of paint put on top of it. It's, it's really unfortunate that uh, that's been lost. But one particular thing I want to point out that uh, I noticed, it's on uh, page 209, um, it refers to a window opening on the west side of the building. I think it opens into the veranda and it says the lower part of the building of that window has been closed up for privacy concerns. Well, that is really unacceptable. That is a window opening, an original window opening. And by no stretch of the imagination is it acceptable to change uh, an original window opening without approval of a committee and so on. Uh, if you need privacy for that window, uh, you could put interior shutters in or some other thing. But uh, that window opening must be restored to what it, what it was supposed to be. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we have uh, hands up from uh, Ms. Grant as well as the applicant. So perhaps we can go to Ms. Grant first. Let's and then go the to Denise first, yep. Thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to follow up on Jane's um, and Councillor Doherty's comments related to the elevations and what's available. So I think because of when this was circulated and the report was finalized, there were previous elevations that were included in those. Um, we'll make sure that any updated elevations are put in dash and you will be, I just wanted to confirm that the committee will be recirculated on this application again. Thank you very much, uh, Mark or whomever at Wilson's. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to touch on a couple of things, uh, particularly, I'll just go back to Don's comment, that, uh, that is an existing window in that picture. That had been stopped up by the Archdiocese many years ago. That's not our work. We intend to uncover that work uh, with a new window. That was the intention there, just to clarify. Um, also, you know, totally um, understanding some of the points around the windows. Um, however, uh, the key concern identified in the noise study was the uh, noise levels off King, uh, King Street West. Um, the study indicated that um, decibel levels are in 55 to 65 during the day and 50 to 60 at night. And these do not meet MOECC guidelines. We have to meet those guidelines for comfort of uh, tenants, et cetera. So that was kind of the primary driver around the window replacement is that in order to achieve that, we need to double glaze, et cetera, those windows. Um, and just, I think there's a little bit of um, clarification needed and maybe Jillian can jump in or Sandy about uh, the addition. Uh, initially we had looked at uh, removing the garage, but I think we found a way of working with the existing structure and replatting it. That was the intention uh, of this latest set of drawings is to work with these, uh, a sound foundation and walls and then augment it with a new siding, windows, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to take what is existing and rather than demolish it and rebuild it, we're going to build on top of it for the, the bedroom and balcony, which we're going to hopefully take advantage of the views to the south, which is why we put it on the McDonald Street side instead of to the north, um, as well as uh, we're going to clad the entire, the existing red brick of that garage is going to be covered with the wood siding, the wood, wood siding. So the matching the brick below those windows 
won't be um, an issue. I hope that uh, clarifies, Mr. Chairman, some of those uh, kind of um, dis disparate elements that uh, we talked about today. Uh, if there's any other questions, we're happy to answer. Uh, otherwise, you know, we look forward to seeing Ryan on the site on Friday. We can go everything over everything with him and detail out uh, next steps. Yeah, I've got one question coming from Matthew, and then I'll just do a summary if that's okay, Matthew. Yeah, uh, I just want to comment on the noise level thing. So I recently tackled this in a project as well. And the solution we came up with was we took out the single glazing, rebated the sashes so you kept the sash, and then installed double glazing that met those requirements. So there, there's multiple ways to get to that. It's not just a wholesale replacement. Anyways. Okay, thank you. Um, any last thoughts on this? Otherwise, Janice and Ryan, I think you've heard concerns. Um, if you or at least one of you is going to the site on Friday, you'll be able to talk about them then, particularly about the work that has been done and whether it is uh, acceptable or not, and um, to talk through the other, other changes. And I presume then come back and post on Dash um, revised plans or changes or whatever comes out of that. Um, do, Janice, does that sound as though that's the next step? Yes, thank you through you, Mr. Chair. So we will be following up with the applicant on what we've heard today and you should be seeing um, revised plans and then the subsequent report on this one. Okay, thank you very much, Mark and uh, Wilsons. Um, for this, we'll be thinking and we'll be watching and everything. And uh, those of you who haven't visited the site, maybe should in the next, uh, next little while and just see it again. Uh, so back to our agenda. I believe we are now at um, working group reports, and I don't believe there are any, Derek? That is correct, no working group reports. Uh, emergency approvals, and Ryan, I don't believe there are any. I can confirm uh, there are none. That's right, okay. Uh, we had no motions, but we are asking for notices of motion, and I believe, Don, you have a notice of motion. Uh, yes, I um prepared a uh notice of motion um for proceeding with uh designation of the odd fellows block um and uh, yes ryan uh derek has just posted it so uh, you can see it uh, before you and uh, uh below the motion is a description of the property that i took out of the heritage impact statement uh, from the last meeting so um, uh, meeting members will have a chance to look at this before the next meeting. Um, I should say my original hope was to have it come forward at this meeting, but uh, uh, the clerk informed me that uh, uh, a week's notice, a uh, week's advance notice was required for this and uh, this is something that maybe we need to discuss uh, under other business, uh, Mr. Chair, if we, if we could. Um, yes, okay. Sorry, Mr. Chair, technically other business is not for movement of significant business. It is for announcements. So there will be a chance for full discussion of this at the September meeting. That is just my advice as the clerk. As okay. per procedural orders. We have a real question here though about not being able to put motions until the agenda is printed and then it's too late to put forward motions. So there's a serious discussion that needs to be made. I don't think it's appropriate at this point, but at some point um, the committee or and, and the, uh, the probably the city clerk need to just clarify how all this works. But at present then we have a motion, we had it on the screen, it's moved by Don, seconded by Jane, uh, dealing with the Oddfellows block and asking for it to be considered for, uh, for designation. Can we get that back up on the screen? Um, so, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, yep. it has been the, the purpose of notices of motion is Don has stated his intention to bring this motion and now it will be brought forward at the September meeting as he has submitted it. So, 
um, it's not appropriate for any further discussion to happen of the substantive motion here. Could and we could we see it though, please? Yes. Because otherwise, may... we have to wait a month to, before we even see it. Well, it will come out on the agenda a week before the meeting. But yes, James can share it, and uh, I can. Uh, commit to you to discussing this further and providing clarification as to how motions are to be presented. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Chair, I accidentally muted your microphone when I went to mute my own. <laughs> my apologies. Uh, uh, the motion uh, to designate 239, 241 Princess and 179 Sydenham Street as a, pro a property of heritage value. Uh, pursuant to Section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, and that will come up for discussion um, at the September meeting. Um, correspondence? None. The next meeting, September 16, either this way or maybe, maybe some other way. Derek, however, you may not be with us. Do you want to explain what's happening? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this actually is my last meeting as the clerk for the committee. I will be moving to a new role with the city on uh, September 14th, so I still will be helping put together the agenda for the next meeting, but this is uh, my last official meeting, so thank you all for the last two years, and uh, we'll be leaving you in good hands. And formally, if you can put in the minutes to our thanks to you, I'm sure. Can you all wave that you want to thank you going into? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, everyone. Good, and uh, looking for an adjournment. And seeing William making the move to adjourn and a seconder. Jennifer, thank you very much. Thank you all, enjoy the rest of the day and uh, thanks for all that you've done. Thank you visitors.